apologies for the delay since the last video. I've been, uh, over the last week or so, I've been spraying this guy with lacquer behind me. But I can only do that when it's not too humid and it's always humid. So, yeah, I can't do much else in my garage while I'm spraying stuff. So that's what the delay's been for. And today, I'm routing the tapers of these necks. So I've already stuck this template on. That's what I'm going to be using first. And then I'm going to be using the exact same router bit that I used for the bodies. And that'll mean that I can do the vast majority of it in a couple of passes. Now, I was hoping to use my router table for this, but it turns out my smallest router, which is the only router that fits in the router table, is kaput. So I'm going to be using it with a handheld router, which is fine. Right, I've just got the heel end of the neck just pinched in between the uh, jaws of the workmate, and that's just enough to hold it in place while I whiz round it with the router. Right, the route of it won't reach all the way down to the bottom of the heel with the template on, so I'll just whip that off and I'll go around the edge once more. Now, a lot of people use super glue accelerator for this job, but I like the fact that when you don't use super glue accelerator, you've got a couple of seconds to wiggle your template around before it's too late. And that because the beauty of uh, Perspex templates is they're uh, clear and you can see the center line through the template, but no luxury like that with the MDF. But then you get what you pay for, I suppose.
Of course, cool, so that's the uh, taper of the fretboards. Fretboards? Neck blanks. Taper of the neck blanks, all sorted. So these guys here, I'll just shape those on the spindle sander. Uh, not today, I'll do that another time. It's not an urgent job that he's doing. Uh, next thing I shall do is stick these fretboards through the thicknesser, get them down to about 5mm. Um, make sure I've got some good glue in surfaces and then they can be stuck on. Right, so there's a couple of streaks left over from the where it went through the thicknesser. Actually, this one's fine. Um, which just prevents it being perfectly flat. So I'm just going to use a little scraper to get a shot of those streaks. Um, otherwise, when I flip it over and run it through, it won't be going through perfectly flat. The razorwood's quite streaky. It's literally just knocking off the high spots with the uh, miniature scraper here. Cool, smell oh, nice and flat. So now I'm going to put them through the other way around. Now I never really trust the um, gauge on the side of the thicknesser. I'm sure it's fine, but I prefer just to use a measuring caliper. line on the fretboard. So I'm not going to slot this fretboard prior to sticking it on, but I do want to know vaguely where some of the frets are going to be. And the reason for that is that I want to start as far this way as I can because I want to cut a piece off of the end and use that for the truss rod cover. That way the grain can all match up nicely. So if that's the 24th fret, that's what the end of this fretboard looks like. Not too bad. It's not currently square, so... Now, call into my neck template. The fretboard ends there. And 24th fret is just there. 
that's where my 24th fret's going to be. Make sure we got the right scale length away. Threat's going to be that's where my nut's going to go. That means this line I'm drawing here is the end of my fretboard. means that I've just got enough to cut out a nice little matching truss will cover there. Now I don't have a table saw otherwise this would be a uh, two second job. So I'm using a fret saw. Now what I normally do when I'm cutting fret slots is I put in a small cut at each end. And then I'll just join the two up. square cut. Now I've done the bottom end of the fretboard first because uh, it kind of works as a practice cut if you like for the nut which is the all important one. In fact here's what I'll do. I'll just draw a little line Just so I can see, double check that I'm cutting vertically. and square too. I think we'll stick this one on before we go and uh, cut the other one. Now this is where I need to make sure that I glue the right fretboard onto the right guitar. And in addition to that I need to make sure I glue it with the truss rod in the guitar. Right, I've drawn a line along here because that tells me where I need to uh, stop smearing glue everywhere. Right. There's an old bit of MDF template that will now do as a clamping core. Just making sure I'm happy with this surface. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. Right. Type one original this time. Actually. Gonna tape off this end. It's because I don't want any glue getting into the where the nut is to affect that. obviously wasn't to be. No, it doesn't need any more glue than that because it's just going to end up dribbling down the sides anyway. See my line. I'm just adding very light clamping pressure um, and that's just because as soon as you start adding 
lots of clamping pressure, the fretboard will want to start moving around. So if we add several clamps very gently, one at a time, then it's less likely to start dancing around as if I added one clamp and tightened it right down. Just found a whole uh, row of magnets that I use for control covers stuck to one of my clamps. I haven't bothered with clamping cores underneath because it's all going to be carved away anyway. I do need to be a bit careful at the truss rod access end because there's not a huge amount of wood just there. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I guess uh, behind the scenes I shall do the same on the ebony fretboard, get that glued on and then when we come back we'll get these clamps off rough off the excess of the fretboard and then I'll use the router to trim the fretboard to match the body and then it'll be time to either radius the fretboard or finalise the headstock shape I might do that, we'll see